Hey there guys, it's me Spencer here and today I'm going to make Diana's Kreskin Moonblade. I know that the first video wasn't really top notch, but I will try my best this time to make it more interesting and enjoyable. That said, let's jump right into it. Diana is a champion from League of Legends, a mobile style game created by Riot Games. The game itself is a spiritual successor to the popular Warcraft 3 mod, Defense of the Ancients, or in short, Dota All Stars. The idea of lore appeared at the end of 2005, but Riot Games only opened its office in September 2006. The two co founders, Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill, partnered with some of the original creators of the All Stars. Uh, Steve Gansho Peak and uh, Steve Pendragon Mask. So people could guess that it's gonna be a good game. Well, originally the community were asking Blizzard, the original creator of Warcraft 3, to make a mod out of the game, but they didn't listen. I don't really know what happened. I wasn't really that big of an back then, so I guess some parallel Lamborghini argument went down between them. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, Ferruccio Elio Arturo Lamborghini was the creator of the famous car Lamborghini. He was making tractors originally, and I don't really know the full story. Well, I could just look it up, but it's it. The fact remains, Lamborghini was thinking that the car's Ferrari was made needed improvements. So he went to talk about his ideas with them, but they sent him away saying You are only good for making tractors. Don't stick your nose into something you don't understand. Let's eat some pizza. Or something like that. So the car Lamborghini was born that day. You decide which one you prefer. Riding a horse or a bull. Back to the original to be. I really don't know what happened exactly, maybe something else. But yeah, Blizzard finally made its own mobile style game, and that's that. Ninja of Legends was released on uh, the 27th of October 2009. First, it wasn't really all that great, but as time passed it became one of the best games and the leading contender in the mobile genre. I still remember the old bugs which made the other players like for yours miserable, like the flash grab with its crank where you pulled your opponent and then flash down the tower pulling them with you. <laughs> or the three javelin sunfire well, where you just take some fires and steal it and just stood right next to your enemies, killing them slowly. And they didn't know what's killing them! <laughs> oh, fun times. But in 2016, there's not that many bugs. And those that happened to be in the game are only minor ones. The champions became more and more unique, and the game really grew into something great. Over the years they created a lot of champions, and one of them was Leona. Not Diana, Leona, it's Leona. We have to mention her, because she was the reason Diana was created. Leona represents the sun, and Diana represents the moon. They are natural enemies. Riot wanted to create a champion that was a counterpart to Leona, namely Diana who was released on August 2012. Her creators were Iron Style, who created the visual design, quality, who designed her mechanics, and for her lore and creative design, Ruben and Haro were responsible. If you would like to know more about how Diana was created, you can check it out on Riot's fan page. The name for the champion probably came from the Roman goddess Diana, who is the goddess of the moon and it means heavenly, divine. And that's it. I'm pretty sure the name came from the goddess. I mean, it's pretty obvious, so yeah, whatever. Also, there's a famous Diana in the world we never go out. The real world. And that person is Diana Spencer, Princess of Wales. Well, we all know what happened to her. Take care of it, double out seven. Yeah, they think I don't know about it. But I do! <laughs> Why 
what happened? Oh, I have a terrible headache. Oh, oh my god, what happened? I think I saw some bright light for a brief moment. Uh, and, then, and then complete darkness. Uh, uh, whatever. Let's get back to the sword. Well, I guess the dark enough about the creation. Let's jump right into the lore. Diana was born when the parents were traveling to Montago for the promise of revelation. Well, I don't really want to judge them, but I mean, if you are pregnant for nine months, maybe you shouldn't travel to a freaky fun thing. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, as they sheltered themselves from the storm on the mountain, Diana was born while the moon was shining at her. But her mother died while giving birth to her. And the next day, Diana was found in the arms of her dead father, bred in Versailles by hunters from the nearby Salari temple. The hunters brought her to the temple where she got the name Diana. She was raised to be a sunflower. Oh, sorry, I mean a sun lover. One of the Solari. They praised and venerate the sun base. Also, she trained every day with the Rahmora, the warrior Templar of the Solari. They taught her all the sunflower stuff. Um, <coughs> I mean, sun loving stuff. And that the light of the moon was false. But Diana found the moonlight and trees and you. And as the years passed, she questioned the others more and more. Once upon a time, when she was sweeping the floors of the temple library, because she argued with her elders again, she found an almost completely burnt manuscript about the extents of a religion which worshipped the moon instead of the sun, the Lunari. As she was reading the papers, an old lady appeared in bearskin clothes. The lady asked for Diana's help because she wanted to climb the mountain before the sun came up. As the Solari teaching says, only the worthy can reach the top of the mountain, and only when the sun is up, it was forbidden to have anybody reach the top, especially at night. But Diana had the old woman. They climbed the mountain together. She was already exhausted. She used up all of her strength when they finally reached the top of the mountain. Diana fell to her knees, catching for air, and as she regained enough strength, to stand up, she tried to look at the lady, but she was nowhere to be found. Only some bare skin cloth on Diana's shoulders proved that the woman really existed. As she gazed upon the stars and the moon on the night sky, she saw the beautiful silver colors of the moon. The sight she witnessed filled her with energy again, and as she looked around, she saw a caves and trees which can only be seen when there's moonlight shine. She stepped into the cave, seeing marks of the Lunari on the walls, and when she reached the chamber, she found a crescent moon blade and a full set of armor, the like of which she's never seen before. She took the blade, and as she did, silver rays of light filled her, proving she was now the owner of the sword. The next day, she went back to the elders, and told them everything she learned about the Lunari and the Moon. The elders were not happy hearing such a thing from an apprentice, and as soon as she finished her tale, they denounced her as a heretic, a blasphemer, a peddler of false gods. For such a heinous crime, only one punishment could suffice. Death. Diana was burning from anger. How could the elders say such things to her? As the anger filled every inch of her body, blazing orbs of silver fire started to spoon around her, and as she swept out her sword with all the rage inside of her, and struck the elders again, again, and again. Where the blade went, silver fire burned everything in its path, incinerating her prey. Appalled at what she had done, Diana fled the site of the massacre, escaping into the wilds of Mount Argon, as the Solari reeled from the savagery of the land. Hunted by the warriors of the Rahmora and their leader Leona, Diana now seeks the 
that there was a fragment that fell on the scenario. Keep them in your mind. Driven by half remembered truths and glimpses of ancient knowledge, Diana has only one truth to cling to that the Lunari and the Solari need not to be fooled. That there is a greater destiny for her than that of a single warrior. What her destiny might be is out, but Diana will find it. Whatever the cost. And that marks the end of her lore. It's pretty up to you, ask me. Who killed her father is mystery? Maybe her parents were part of the Lunari. At least that's what the lore tries to show us. I don't know. I didn't really find anything else about the lore. There are speculations, but yeah, everyone can decide what they. But let's come back to the real world and find out what kind of secret swords are there. Yeah, similar to Diana's crest. First of all, the most similar secret sword is Compass, which is an Egyptian secret sword used in 2500 BC. It was first made out of bronze, and then later from iron. Unlike Diana's blade, Compass were only sharp on outside, and the inside part were used as a tool. The compass went out of use around in uh, 1300 BC. Yeah, there isn't an awful lot to talk about. That's really all of it, except that they found some in the grave of Tutankhamun. The other secret sword is the Assyrian secret sword. It was most likely not used before, because as far as we know, these types of swords were only a representation of authority, the sword of the gods. They only serve ceremonial purposes. And that's all the real life swords that resemble Diana's crescent blade. The only thing that's left to talk about are the real life moon worshipping religions, similar to the Lunari. Moon worship is founded on the belief that the phases of the moon and the growth and decline of land, animal and human life are related. In some cases, the people of the regions expose their food to the moonlight, believing that it fills it with energy and the capability to cure diseases or prolong life. But there are religions which not only expose food to the moonlight, but their own newborn children too, to the first full moon to be exactly correct. However, the best real life and religious of Legends lore representation is the ancient Egyptian and the ancient Assyrian Empire. Egypt worshipped the sun and Ra, the god which represented it. Maybe that's where the Rahora came from for the Solari warriors. And Assyrians worshipped the moon, namely Nata. So you can say that Egypt is the Solari and the Assyrian Empire is the Lunari. I don't really want to go into more details. You should have learned about these empires in school. <laughs> well, if you are like me, then you probably don't remember any of that. So, if you are interested in what went down between the two of them, you have to look it up. One more important thing to mention. In the ancient religions, the moon is the symbol of wisdom and guidance. Unlike in the Middle Ages and modern society, where it's often linked to bad legendary creatures, like werewolves, or black magic, the full moon is a great power source for practicing it, as far as some belief goes. Still, the best bad representation is the lunatic word, which came from the Latin lunaticus word, meaning of the moon or moonstruck. In Latin, the word referred to people with epilepsy or madness, as disease is thought to be caused by the moon. And as time passed, the word started to commonly used as the term to refer to neurological or psychiatric diseases or people with mental illness. And here we are after the backsmithing part ended. This is what the blade looks like uh, after the process. The next part would have been me making the edges, the grinding, the heat treatment, the cold treatment, the crunching, the making of the grip, and the painting process. 
you're probably wondering why I tell you this now. Well, I lost the footage. Like all of it. Uh, oh god, why am I so bad at this game? Cold life. Uh, I guess I owe you an explanation. Well, what I usually do is I set up the camera, put a memory card in it, and then start the recording. Everything then is planned up to the part of the filming. Well, you know, what I usually do, I take the wall cover and uh, stand back to the computer, but for some parallel reason, I didn't do that now. <laughs> I took out the memory card and tried to go back to the house. Uh, but my dog had other plans in mind. She tried to outrun me, and uh, in that process she got in front of me. So I had to pull my imaginary brakes. But there were mud everywhere on the ground. So I slipped. The memory card flew right out of my hand. And while I tried to not fall, I stepped on it. Uh, and it broke. It completely broke. Oh, and by the way, I fell into the mud too. And to make things worse, when I tried to stand up, I fell again. That dog is just trying to kill me. Believe me. She is trying to kill me. I'm not crazy, guys. I'm not crazy. I'm not a lunatic. She always does this. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing for German Shepherds. It must be. Uh, well, I have to apologize to you guys. But the footage is lost. Uh, yeah, sorry. And that marks the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, leave a comment, like or dislike the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I will try my hardest to make the next video even better. And try not to lose the footage. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. And now, let the fun part begin.